Question number 12. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Social Development and asks, when she said child poverty remains a serious issue and all standard measures show rates have been flat since 2009, was she publicly accepting that there are indeed standard measures of child poverty? Honourable uh, Paula uh, Mr Speaker, I have always said there are many standard measures. measures. What, what there's not is an official measure for New Zealand. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Holly Walker. If child poverty is a serious issue, will she now adopt those standard measures she referred to as the official measures of child poverty and set binding targets to reduce them? Honourable Paula Bennett. I think the point that the member um, that I'm going to pick up that the member makes is that there are many standard measures and that this country would spend at least 12 months debating which one to use. I don't think the country needs that debate. What they need is action on child abuse and neglect. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How many families with children have been financially sanctioned since October 2010 under her welfare reform package, and what is the human impact on the children whose parents have had their benefits cut? Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't have that information in front of me. It wasn't in the main question. What I would say, though, is it's also the length of sanction that is important. And for the vast majority of them, it is literally days, and in most cases they actually don't get money coming out of their account, or in this case not going in, because they recomply before that actually happens. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table this graph prepared by the Parliamentary Library showing the dramatic increase in the number of families with children financially sanctioned since October 2010 to more than 8,000. Leave is sought to table that particular graph prepared by the Library. Is there any objection? There appears to be none. It can be tabled. Jane. Supplementary? Supplementary question. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In light of her previous answer that she'd prefer to focus on abuse and neglect, has she read the Child Poverty Action Group report showing a strong correlation between poverty and child abuse? And how does she expect to meet the government's target for redu reducing assaults on children without also setting targets to reduce child poverty, since the two are clearly linked? Honourable. Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, I have read part of the um, CPAG report. To be fair, I didn't get it in advance like the member did or the media did, so I've only received it this morning. Um, but what I can say is actually um, we never de debated whether or not poverty was a factor, but it is one of many. And actually, if you look at the reasons for child abuse and neglect, I mean, if one looks at sexual abuse, actually it's not because they're poor. It's because actually someone's pretty sick and has hurt a child, and that doesn't depend on their income. So I would say that poverty, unemployment, harsh parenting styles, poor education attainment, mental health, fractured families, drug and alcohol abuse, and a history of having been abused as a child are all associated with child physical and emotional abuse and neglect, and simply looking at poverty would be negligent to those children that need us most. Mr Speaker, point of order. Point of order. Holly Walker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table the Child Poverty Action Group report, Child Abuse and Analysis of Child, well, Youth and Family Data. I presume data it's a report yesterday. that's freely available to all members. No. Has the member got a further supplementary? No. We move now to question to members. Question uh, number one, Darian Fenton.